Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm gonna to be talking about how to read the light meter of a 35 millimeter SLR. Let's talk about light meters. So on a digital camera, there's so many ways to make sure that the exposure of your image is perfect. But film can be a little bit more difficult because of course, there is no deleting an image as soon as you've taken it on your roll of film. But luckily, many, many 35 millimeter SLR cameras out there have built-in light meters for you to reference in order to help you understand how to get a good exposure for your image. So I'm gonna take a look at an example of a light meter in an SLR and help you to understand how to interpret the information that it's giving you and also when you should trust them and when maybe you should should use your best judgment. So most SLRs have their own light meter right inside the viewfinder for you to quickly reference when taking your picture. This is called TTL metering, which means through the lens. Your light meter is measuring all the light coming through the lens and giving you a reading based off of that. Now, again, let's take a look at my Canon AT1 here as an example. This has a really basic, easy to read, standard SLR light meter in the viewfinder. Now it's comprised of a couple of indicators and two points, one at the top and one at the bottom. Now, as I change my ISO, my shutter speed, and the aperture on my camera, then the indicator with a circle at the end of it will move up and down. Meanwhile, there's a needle that moves up and down based on the light that I point the camera at. The goal to get a good exposure by using this light meter is to match the indicator that has a circle on the end of it with the position that the moving needle is on the light meter. So first of all, it's really important to set the correct ISO on your camera of the film that you're shooting because this will help the camera to interpret the information based on the film that you're shooting and how sensitive your film is to the light. So once we've set the right ISO, then we can start to change around our shutter speed and our aperture until our little indicator matches up with the needle on the light meter. Now, if my needle moves all the way to the top mark, that means that there is a ton of light coming in through my lens. And if my needle moves all the way to the very bottom mark, that means that there's very, very little light coming in through my lens. And those really extreme instances are when it's kind of hard to take a picture. Now, one of the problems that we encounter is that this light meter is trying to interpret all the light in the scene at once and give you kind of a overall metering of the scene for you to be able to choose your exposure from. But this meter can be unreliable in instances like really high contrast scenes. So for example, if you have a really bright sky and really dark shadows, then your meter is going to try and guess the overall exposure for what it's looking at. So you might end up with really blown out sky with no details in it or really crushed shadows with no details in them. This is when it's important to start making your own decisions about exposure. And you can use your light meter as reference for what you want to take and tailor it more to what you want out of the scene that you're shooting. So if my needle is in one position, I can move my indicator a little bit below it if I want to overexpose or I can move my indicator above it if I want to under expose. And sometimes these instances will go against what your light meter is guessing for the scene. So your light meter is a really powerful and super useful tool, but you don't always have to go with what it says because you have the ability to use your own judgment and interpret what you're looking at and tailor it for what you want the most out of your image. So the light meter in your camera is powered by a battery. All sorts of SLRs take different types of batteries as well. So you're going to have to look into what kind of battery your specific camera takes. Now some SLRs do have an on off switch, which means you have to turn them on before you can know if the light meter works. So when you put a fresh battery in your SLR, the easiest way to test the light meter is to turn it on if you have an on off switch, and then just to point it at a variety of different objects, both light and dark, and see if anything in your viewfinder is moving in order to interpret the light that's entering through the lens. Some cameras won't have an on off switch, like this Pentax K1000. The light meter is constantly on and the battery is always being used. Now for cameras like these, you need to keep your lens cap on when it's not in use because this keeps the light meter from drawing power all the time. Other cameras have LED indicators in the viewfinder like this Minolta X700. And this has a meter that will show me a red light based on the exposure information that it's giving me. It works the same way though and will move up when overexposed or down when underexposed. Now again, SLR cameras are great when you're shooting film because of all the manual control that you have over them. And a lot of the times these 
built-in light meters are really useful to help you start to understand what's going to look good and to give you a reference for your scene. And of course, being able to properly understand all the information that one of these light meters is trying to give you inside of your camera will help you to begin taking better pictures. Now, of course, if you're shooting a point and shoot camera, all of this is being done for you and you don't have to worry about any of the manual options or being able to interpret information that the camera is trying to give you because it's all just doing this automatically and choosing the exposure, which of course is sometimes why you can still come out with bad looking pictures from a point and shoot because it just doesn't have the ability to make good judgment all the time based on different variables. Now in the future, I'm also going to look at handheld light meters. Now these can look confusing and strange, but I promise that once you get the hang of it, the information on these meters is actually not that hard to read. And there's so many different instances where a handheld light meter is going to be really useful. And of course, not all cameras have built-in light meters, so that's when a handheld one definitely comes in useful. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe for more analog content all the time as I post stuff about films and cameras and just different formats and stuff. And I am going to do Patreon shoutouts now because it is the end of March, beginning of April, and I have some amazing people who I'm going to specifically thank who have donated and supported the Patreon. We have Abby Henderson, Audrius Radzvedicus, we have Benjamin MacArthur, Cameron Talley, Carson Fuller, Carter Lance, Nakia Jones, Ramblings from Canada. Those are the people who have contributed so far to the Patreon. And I'm also doing one big special shout out to one of the patrons who supported on the highest tier. And I have actually shot their credit onto a slide film. And I recently received this thing as a gift. Now this is a uh, slide projector slash slide viewer. So if we power this up, Got a nice fan going, motor going on it. An extra special thank you to uh, Carson Fuller who has donated on the Patreon. And you have your credit actually shot onto a roll of Kodak Ektachrome. So there is a link in the description to the Patreon if you're interested in that. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.